and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to explain to you why you need to jump right on that census form when it comes in and fill it out. My guests are Colin Lewis from the Census yes. Bureau and Letitia Handy from Hampton, mm -hmm. <laughs> from the Unity Commission. So just give us a real brief overview of what the census is and why we do it every 10 years. So the decennio, the purpose of the decennio is to make sure that we count every person once, only once, and in the right place. And what we mean by that is, regardless of citizenship or anything else, we want to count every person living within the continental United States, as well as Hawaii and Alaska, and all of our territories. Uh, the purpose of this, it was started in 1790, and it was mandated by uh, the Constitution that we do this. So we've been doing this for quite some time. And although it may not be all the way perfected, we're still in the process of doing it. And what it mainly does is it helps us with a reapportion of the seats for our House of Representatives. It helps with redistricting, but it also helps us as it relates to $675 billion being dispersed across our nation to help with programs like SNAP, WIC, school. Oh, 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 no acronyms. You got to say what those are. Okay. <laughs> Food assistance. Food assistance. Women, infants, and children. Women, assistance. infants, and children. I apologize. <laughs> Roads, hospital locations. Uh, even businesses use our data to, to decide where should we place a business. Right. So if you live in a community and you don't see certain businesses that you would like, a good part of the reason may be because of your census data. Ooh, good one. That that hits people sometimes mm -hmm. more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So, Letitia, how is the city involved? Because this is really, it's, it's a federal deal, right? It is. And so I will tell you that the Complete Count Committee is a uh, commission, I would say, that I just inherited by way of the work of the U.S. Census. And they actually sent out an invitation to all localities to form complete count committees to help on the ground of getting people counted, to have uh, trusted messengers and community influencers to kind of help us in navigating and spreading the word about the census and motivating residents to respond. And um, you're also involved because sometimes the people who don't participate are um, it, minority people or areas of the community that mainstream media doesn't necessarily reach. Absolutely. So there has been identified low response areas that we are trying to intentionally go out and motivate. Uh, we are working with different agencies and support organizations to ensure that those in minority or low economic status, those that may have transient uh, residency, being that they flow in and out and may not have any ties to Hampton and mm -hmm. feel leery about whether they should respond here, even those that are currently pregnant, uh, their infants count. And so we have to be... Because you're looking at 10 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's years. a moment in time, but you're looking in... Yeah. Exactly. We're looking at it right now. And with our instantaneous uh, society right now, we think, oh, that doesn't apply to the unborn child. But in 10 years, that child will be in our community receiving services, going to schools, uh, receiving education, mm -hmm. roadways, and, and things of that nature. So we have been tasked, I guess, to ensure that we're reaching those pockets of low response areas. Okay. Um, and again, there's a bottom line reason here that, that is dollars in services to oh, big people dollars. in need. How, how big are the dollars so for when each we're, person? When we're thinking about each person that's not counted, it's $2,000 over the course of 10 years. So that's $20,000 bottom line that we lose in government funding support for each person that's not counted. And so when we and who think, does that support go to? I mean, I know there's a lot, but what are some of the big recipients? So some of what Colin was mentioning was uh, roads, uh, education, uh, women and children. We're looking at food assistance. We're looking at how do we allocate funds to our support organization because some of the funds from the city of Hampton in our budgets go to transition family violence services mm -hmm. or, or support organizations like that that provide services to the community. So when you're thinking about funding that would funnel right into the city, 
And if these people aren't counted, then that means that we're not allocating funds properly to support the, the population that we actually have. And services for seniors. I mean, I hear a lot yes. about what are we doing for seniors. We need to make sure they're counted and that everybody is counted Absolutely. for that allocation. Absolutely. So if I could give you a snapshot of, of individuals that we are intentionally trying to target, it would be our elderly community or uh, those aging in place, uh, people that are in assistant living facilities, children zero to five years old, college students, military. So those are some of the, the areas that we are definitely trying to uh, tap into. We have partnered with our faith base when we are intentionally making subcommittees of community influencers, uh, like I mentioned, our interfaith leaders. We have some of our departmental organizations and we're meeting strategically to figure out ways that we actually channel in to, to that client base. So interestingly, some of the people who are least likely to respond are also most likely to need the funds and the services that, that the census counts us for, right? Absolutely. What do you think? I, I agree totally. Yeah. Uh, often we realize that, as she mentioned, uh, we have a very low response for children between the ages of zero to five. Uh, we're trying to um, evaluate reasons why that may be, but at the end of the day, the reasons really don't matter. We just want to make sure we get the word out that, as she mentioned, we don't think about it, but a six-year-old today will be driving in 10 years. As scary as that is, <laughs> as scary as that is, they will be driving on our roads. And so we want to ensure that our roads are safe, that you know we have what we need as far as all the services from children from ages zero even to our senior population, because it does help with Medicare and Medicaid and other things, Pell Grants. Ooh, that's um, it, college it, assistance. College yeah. assistance. It, it covers so many things. And so I think that if our, popula if our population knew exactly what it covered, more would be more receptive to it. So let's just, I'm going to tell, you're going to tell me um, that it's different this year. Like in the past, I'm old, I've done this a few times. The, the deal is one person from your household fills it out, but it used to come in the mail as a little letter and you filled in your boxes and then there was an envelope and you sent it back. But this year the federal government is trying to save a little money and maybe get at some of those younger parents or younger people who haven't um, participated in the past. Yeah, so we have a generation that um, is almost tied to their phones 24 hours a day. And so to be flexible, this is the first time ever we'll have it where you can do it online, you can do it by phone. Uh, if you call in by phone, we have over 59 languages available for someone who English may not be their first and most dominant language. Um, but we also have the paper form because we understand that some seniors may not feel comfortable using the internet or they may not be trusting in making a phone call. So they will have that option as well. But what we're hoping and preferring is that everyone use your smartphone, use a tablet, use a computer. We've partnered with libraries and other nonprofits who have offered a computer space and time. So that, and we put them in those communities of low response because we didn't want them trying to figure out right. logistics. So we want to make sure that it's in the community that you, you, know, you live in, but we want to make sure that you're safe and um, able to use it. And so we have a lot of ambassadors and a lot of partners, thanks to Leticia in the city of Hampton, mm -hmm that have partnered with us to make that available for those who may have internet connectivity issues or just need assistance in filling it out. And this is also weird in that people don't necessarily think they need to be counted in Hampton. Like if I'm military, maybe my official residence is Florida because of the tax situation. I, I'm not, I don't vote here, I don't pay taxes here, but but, but is the operative word. So April 1st, where you're at is where you count. Yes. And so I think- Where you live, like if you're on vacation, that doesn't count, but where you're, right. yes. you're so, residence so as you're of- So your residence as of April 1st, even those at, in the hospital, they would be counted based on where they're at. And so we're working with the administrators at Centera to get people oh, wow. counted even in the maternity ward. And so we're excited to see uh, who was born April 1st, and and mm -hmm. so they will be counted uh, based on where they're at at the time and also their 
physical residents. Um, and I think students are difficult too. If you're yeah. a college student, you you have the option of where you register to vote. Right. Um, but a lot of them are registered at their home address, and they think, "Oh, mom and dad are going to count me. I don't. I don't need to count myself." That's not true. That's not true. So if you are attending college at Thomas Nelson Community College or Hampton University and you're here, we would like for you to get counted here because the services that we're talking about, the allocation of funds, will also support you and your tenure while you're here in wonderful Hampton. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that you're counted uh, here. Um, another group you mentioned that doesn't get counted, young children. Obviously, they don't return the form themselves, but I'm going to guess that sometimes that's young parents. Mm -hmm. They're not as plugged into the community. I mean, once your kid hits school age, right. you're in. You're, right. you're a part of a bigger community. But, right. but sometimes with those younger kids, right. you, um, it, you maybe don't have a stable address or you're not as well committed. But, Absolutely. So how do we how do we get to those people? So that goes with our partnerships and collaborations. We are working with Smart Beginnings. We are even working with the Food Bank who usually has a good uh, amount of participants, emails, and contacts that they can share with us for parents to get involved at a young age. We're also working with Healthy Families uh, with our human services department. Because they have so, great play groups. Yes, you know, they have great play groups. And, and so, classes, okay. And classes, right. And so we want to get people where they're at. We don't want to necessarily pull people out of their normal routines. And so that means we contact the places that they would be more than likely uh, a patron or, or frequent uh, um, participant of. And so hopefully with our efforts and planning and also tagging along census and having vendor registration tables available. Right now we've partnered with Hampton Roads Convention Center. We know that there are a couple of events targeting young people and so we hope that they will be able to motivate residents to respond there too. Now we have been saying college students need to do this, military need to do this. If you live on base or on campus do you still fill out your own form or does someone else so kind of count you? <laughs> we're supposed to be partnering with administrators that will count people that are in group quarters. Group quarters would be military base. It's the residents that live off base that we need to make sure right. are counted and the same for colleges. We're also doing the same uh, group quarters when I'm talking about Centera, but even for our jails. So it isn't just the uh, low response areas that we've indicated that we want to participate. We want all residents to participate. So, um, And you know, it's one of those things. If there's not going to be that piece of paper to return, I mean, get the get the postcard and do it right away mm -hmm. because it'll get buried in your mail. You'll forget about it. Um, but there are some reminders. <laughs> yes. And I, I just want to say this um, to 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 remember that it's only 10 questions. This is not the American Community Survey that asks an exorbitant amount of questions which are very needed for things of grants and things of that nature. But this one is only 10 questions, uh, so it's safe, it's easy. Uh, we make sure that we keep everything confidential. Every uh, census employee has been sworn, sworn in, given an oath, and it's a low, an oath for a lifetime. It's not a until the census is over type of, of oath. And we have very... And that's really important because I think um, there's been a lot of news about federal uh, government and you're a part of the government, but, but you're very separate from immigration or anything else. So people who maybe don't have documentation um, about why they're here can still respond and those people can still get services and be a part of... Um, our country. They're here. Yes, we want them to be feel a part of the Hampton City community. And so, yes, we want everyone to respond, regardless of that, because at the end of the day, regardless of um, that stat, your status, you still use our roads, you still use our hospitals, your children still go to our schools. So we want to make sure that every person in Hampton has the best services possible. And the way we make sure that that happens is by getting an accurate count of everyone so that we know what services are needed and what assistance is needed. And so, yes, the, the confidentiality piece is the most important piece. We don't share any information with ICE, with housing, 
with any of the other federal agencies. Uh, in fact, the information that's gathered now will not be released for another 72 years. You mean the address-specific information? Yes. Obviously, the aggregate will. Yes, so the numbers will be uh, used, but as far as releasing that information to the public, that happens in 72 years. So right now, that would be, what, 2092. I don't think I'll be around. <laughs> yeah, I honestly hope that I'm not. That would put me well over 100, so... Um, but we're, we're just thankful for the city of Hampton for partnering with us and getting out um, the information because what we've also tried to do is hire individuals within Hampton to work in Hampton because we want neighbors telling other neighbors about it. And so our hiring campaign even focused on hiring people in our low response areas who live and who work in those low response and areas. And know people. And they know and people. There's more trust. There's right. a lot more trust. And so um, everything that we've done is to kind of knock down walls and barriers of distrust and mistrust because we want people to trust that this can help you individually. It's more than helping Hampton. It's more than helping the state of Virginia. And it's more than helping the country. It's helping each individual who lives in Hampton to ensure that whether I'm a college student, there are certain things that the college students wish they had, and this may be an opportunity for them to get some of those things they wish that they had. Okay. Now, before we wrap up, you have a special kickoff plan, yes. Letitia. You want to tell us about that? Yes, I'm lighting up. Because <laughs> shaping your future starts here. Uh, Count Me in Hampton is a pep rally that we are about to launch March 14th. I know that this may play a couple of times. However, we have another event lined up uh, leading up until the end of census. March 12th is when mailers go out, but we will have an opportunity for people to respond from March 12th to July 31st. We, we don't want you to respond that right. late, but we would like it. for you to get it and do it, but to motivate those efforts to have residents respond and to have an opportunity for people to act now, we are hosting our kickoff pep rally at Peninsula Town Center in Town Square on March 14th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. There will be entertainment, games, a lot of fun. We actually have a food challenge. Thank you to our sponsors at Buffalo Wild Wings that will be hosting a challenge and just a lot of opportunities for people to engage. We're waiting on a couple of other restaurants to see who is going to participate in the discounts and the incentives. So we're, we're thankful for Peninsula Town Center for opening up their space. Um, that will be an opportunity for people to hear more about recruitment job opportunities. I think the hourly rate in Hampton is eighteen fifty an hour. That's a pretty good part-time job. That is. That's a great part-time job. A lot of retirees job. or people who are underemployed or, you know, that's a a nice way to get a little uh, extra income. Right, Working right. Home. If I had time, I would be a census worker. <laughs> One of my brother-in-laws is a census worker. Right. Where he lives. And you work from home and you set your own, own schedule and your own hours. Right. And so that's a huge incentive. And you get paid weekly mm. and you also get paid mileage. So I'm not pitching, but I am pitching. <laughs> you are still hiring. That's right. good because there was a hiring push six or eight months ago, yes. so right. it's, it's good that that opportunity is still open. Oh. You know what you need, Letitia? What? I need a Robin there. You need, <laughs> you need like, I voted stickers that show people how, you know, yes. remind people to vote. So, um, I think our marketing and outreach, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said I need a Robin <laughs> to make sure that we are marketing this properly, and I'm just always thankful to you and your team for supporting us on that, but we do have I counted in Hampton stickers that are coming, uh, compliments of marketing and route outreaches efforts to design our logo and our marketing material. We have a lot of gifts and goodie bags that we will Ooh. be giving away that day. And so community development has been helpful. So helpful. the whole city is the really whole city is corralling behind this effort. I, I think I sent an email saying I love my EMT family because <laughs> the executive management team okay. is definitely supportive in all the efforts that the Citizens Unity Commission does. And so I just, I'm thankful. Um, before I get emotional, right? But marketing and outreach has pins coming. We have uh, swag bags coming. We've got our I Counted in Hampton stickers and coming. And you, know, you should keep that around because that reminds other people, oh, go home and do it, right? or do it from work, or right. whatever. Yes. Right, right. And so there will be an opportunity for people to 
fill out their uh, applications or surveys there for the census on March 14th. And then we are going to have our interfaith census community explosions coming up. And I'll save the dates for, you know, for future uh, marketing if you're a part of E! News, then people will be able to see it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Please do, as soon as that postcard comes, jump right in, online or on the phone, and fill it out. And remember, it does mean dollars to people in Hampton who need services. Um, young children, schools, roads, seniors, it, it matters a lot. And it matters because it, is, it ensures that your vote counts when you go to an election. Because if Hampton is undercounted, we won't have as many representatives. We won't have as many in the General Assembly either because they use the census count. So ensure that you are heard and that people who need services get those services. Thanks for watching.